this is when I first came, uh, returned to the community. We would meet every Thursday morning at six o'clock at uh, Perkins. And there were seven to 10 men every week. And one of the brothers would come by and pick me up. And man, some days I just didn't want to do it, but I, I you know, they, they, they would come and get me and say, hey, you, you need to be here. Well, the, the, the biggest deal is, was the, the camaraderie, being around individuals who also came from the very lifestyle that I came from, who had conviction on their background as well as I did. Um, that, was, that was unique within itself. And I think that's where I grew tremendously, those six o'clock meetings for two years we did this two years consistently and we being able to really have real dialogue about you know real life issues about some of the trials and tribulations that we face daily um, that was unique it gave us space to, to even operate in our own faith um, that was huge so be, for those reasons um, that was impactful for me because that's what I needed at that time and uh, my growth, I, I feel that was a period of tremendous growth for me, a period that pulled out leadership in me, and a period of just being around a positive, constructive men really helped form my life and, and helped me become the man that I am today. Many of us in this room are aware of how easy it is to go back inside these places for no new crime. So uh, the very first person was Jerome Diller, actually. He, um, man, he didn't know me and I didn't know him. But someone told him about me and he actually came to the halfway house and that's where I was at and he visited me at the halfway house. And uh, man, it was just like a connection, an immediate connection. Um, and since that day, we've never, like, we've always been together, you know, literally. He always checks in on me, what's going on, what you doing, who you around, what you struggling with. Like, he don't hold no punches, so he didn't then, and he definitely don't now, so. Transformational leadership within the Man Up group was organic. Uh, it was organic because many of us didn't realize the leadership ability within us. And as we grew, uh, we took, stepped into our place of leadership uh, that has touched thousands of lives in this city. You can't tell me that, you know, only black, black people committing crimes. That's a problem. And, and, and then we're not even, I'm, I'm just in the state of Wisconsin, we, we only make up 6%. Mm -hmm. But in our prison system, we make up 53%. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. That's a problem. Well, it's, it's interesting because I never saw this coming. So I was doing it and I didn't really see it as a skill set per se. Um, it just came natural. I've always been very good with people. And while I was incarcerated, it was many men that would reach out based on different situations that they were going through. And so, I was doing Man Up before I had a name or it had an identity or any of those things. Uh, the, the bright idea of having something just for black men to come together and talk about our issues was brilliant. And I want to say that uh, it was successful because out of all those men who were gathering uh, for Man Up uh, on Tuesday nights, uh, none of them, zero, went back to prison. So I would say that's a model. Today we call it peer support, but at the time it was just men supporting one another and helping each other uh, through conversation, uh, through our deeds. Because that's really what reentry really looks like. You know, people walking aside other people. That's why lived experience is so important in these conversations, right? To have people who really understand it. If you really don't understand it, it's very difficult for you to walk on side with someone else. But for the person who has endured it and made it to the other side, the only goal is to grab another person 
And we understand the only time you have the right to look down on a person is when you extend in the hand to lift them up. And so that's the goal. That's what we do. We do it day in and day out. We reach down, we reach down low, and we bring people up high. Um, that's what was done with us, and so that's what we do to others. For 30 years, Nehemiah has had an impact in this community. Uh, number one, working with youth and children has been just consistent and productive and successful. Uh, working with uh, individuals such as myself uh, who are formerly incarcerated has given hope to so many uh, returning to this community from incarceration. Just 30 years of consistency and giving and loving uh, is why I feel Nehemiah has been successful.